The, the first line treatment of ALK positive lung cancer has really changed over the last several years. Uh, for a long time, we had one drug, crizotinib, a very good drug that proved itself better than chemotherapy, the standard at that time. But things have changed dramatically in the last few years now that we have two other agents available for first line use, namely seritinib and electinib. But more recently, we, we now have data that show electinib is superior to crizotinib, and so that has made it a a clear choice over crizotinib, and for reasons I'll get into in a little bit, is probably just an easier drug to take than seritinib. So for a lot of, a lot of reasons, efficacy and, and tolerability, electinib for me has become the new standard of care in the first line setting. Electinib found its way into the first line setting uh, because of the results from a randomized phase three trial where patients, about 300 patients, were randomized to either electinib or to crizotinib. So these were all patients, a global study, who had ALK rearranged lung cancer. The randomization was, uh, was simple and the study was designed to show both progression-free survival advantages and then, and then other typical outcomes like overall survival, but also outcomes that were very interested in like control of CNS disease. The primary objective of the study was met. The study was better in terms of progression-free survival for electinib compared with uh, crizotinib. Um, by about a 50% reduction in the risk of death or progression with electinib. Actually, a, a more recent update of progression-free survival suggests that the median approach is three years compared with just under a year with crizotinib. That's quite substantial. We don't yet have survival data, but I'm currently at ASCO 2019 where we are expecting to see updated um, follow-up from the ALEX trial. Uh, where we're going to get um, hopefully some more information on long-term follow-up of these patients. The other important finding from Alex um, was the control of CNS metastases. So if you were on electinib, uh, your um, reduction in the risk of CNS progression was about 85 uh, percent. That's quite substantial. You know, patients with alkali range lung cancer unfortunately have a high rate of um, of CNS burden, and it's a, it's a frequent clinical problem for patients, families, clinicians. To see a drug like that have such remarkable control is really quite outstanding. And for me, when the Alex results first were presented, um, that was the most striking thing was the CNS control, because crizotinib was a fantastic drug, but the CNS control here was really, really outstanding. So you have a PFS advantage, you have a CNS advantage, and what we're all expecting to be an overall survival advantage. But honestly, even if it doesn't hit overall survival, those two things alone um, make it a, a, um, an obvious first line choice for me. The toxicity profile for electinib on the ALEX study and really the trials that preceded it, namely the J-ALEX study, um, fit with what we expect from ALK inhibitors. Uh, myalgias are something you experience and can be seen uh, at least more serious myalgias in about 15% of our patients. What I personally have noticed is that myalgias tend to creep up on you the longer the patients are on it. Um, I can think of uh, patients who have had no symptoms and then all of a sudden after we get to about a year, you know, they start telling me how bad things are. I always wonder if patients actually downplay some of their symptoms because they want to stay on the top, you know, the full, the full dose of therapy. As it turns out right now, I, I am dose reducing two patients because of, actually because of edema and myalgias. Um, and I think that's what you have to do is take a break from therapy like we used to do with crizotinib or with seritinib. Take a break, al allow patients to recover, and then start at a lower dose. And, and that tends to be effective um, uh, for my patients. These drugs are quite potent. Uh, we don't know how low you can go before you're at a dose that's just not going to be effective, but um, at least we know dose reductions um, occurred on the randomized trials, uh, and we know patients can do well, and we know in practice that ha that's a safe way to manage patients. Um, so I guess important to mention that electinib is not without toxicity, but it's manageable.